Hi folks, thanks for checking out Chat with Champions. In this week's episode, it is Monster Energy Supercross and AMA Pro Motocross 250 champion. Yes, he did it all in the one year. That is the factory Honda HRC pilot, Jet Lawrence. Jet, we're going to get to all the racing stuff in a minute or a little bit later. Let's talk with the big headlines. A little birdie tells me something today that starting this week at A1 in Anaheim, there's going to be Jetson Donuts available for sale for everybody. True or false? Uh, this this is very, very true. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, our partner with Jets and Donuts and that stuff with Aaron and uh, and that have been, uh, they've been awesome and Feld has been awesome and, and uh, are allowing us to uh, sell my donuts at uh, at the stadiums. It's awesome since COVID kind of put it back in a little bit uh, back behind plan with COVID and that stuff. So I'm super excited. We're going to be uh, selling four donuts a box, uh, a little kind of rally, ta- uh, rally towel and even some uh, merchandise and stuff like that that you can't really buy anywhere else. So we're, we're super excited for it because it's kind of like the first proper release of Jets and Donuts, and hopefully this can give me some extra oomph on the track also. <laughs> this, is, this is something that started out as fun that's now turned, mm. turned into a business. But for those folks who may be watching who don't know where this all started, how I mean, you're synonymous with Donuts, right? Where did it start? How did this all get going? It kind of, it, I'll give you a short version. It all started, there was always a one guy at the, uh, when we were with Geico that always brought donuts in on Friday and I'd always sneak one. And he ended up uh, leaving, so no one would bring donuts anymore. So I ended up making a deal with my uh, team manager at that point was uh, Josh. And uh, he, I said, I'm like, okay, if I win Monster Cup, I want to have donuts. Like if I go 1-1, one, one, I'm like going to eat it on the podium. And so I ended up going 1-1 one, one at Monster Cup. And so I didn't, I was probably, I was 16. I didn't care. So I ate them straight on podium <laughs> during the interview and that stuff. Not really think of anything of it that it might turn into something. It's just, I really wanted donuts. And, and it turned into this big, like you say, kind of going into a business thing now, which is definitely wild. We never really planned on it being like this. So it's definitely wild. Cool story. Very cool story. You know what else is cool is what you put together in, 2022 both in the monster energy supercross championship and ama pro motocross i mean any rider any driver any sports person any athlete will tell you that they enter the sporting arena to win of course we understand that but did you even surprise yourself a little bit of the year that you had it was uh it was definitely an awesome year i wouldn't say i would surprise myself i was going in kind of knowing what i needed to do and what i had to do kind of thing it wasn't like a a surprise where it's like oh wow like I never really thought I was going to win it this year since I got it last year with outdoors in 2021 I was like okay yeah now like now I, it's more like I have to and I I got to kind of thing second year going off a championship or well, sorry it was third year going off a championship I kind of had to get my stuff sort of getting super cross first obviously because I still didn't get my championship yet in that and kind of like had my goals set on getting that championship and I was pumped when I got that. Then from there, it was defending that uh, outdoor title. So that was kind of a sense of relief. I mean, it's kind mm. of, it, it sounds a little bit strange when you, you ended last year as an 18-year-old, you're now 19, and, and but still you, you, you've put that much pressure on yourself and expectation to deliver. So it was a, it was a sigh of relief once you got the Supercross title? It uh, it definitely was nice. It was a good kind of like, okay, that's one box ticked off, one major box ticked off for this year. Now it's kind of like, all right, let's uh, we can use the last round as a fun round and that stuff. But the next few out like going in the outdoors, then it's like kind of back to that uh, back at square one and working up to try and ticking off that uh big box at the end of the year. You don't, I know that you shield yourself off pretty well, uh, and your manager Lucas does as well. Um, but there are people who have been in this sport a lot longer than you who sing your praises, champions, fellow champions who sing your praises um, and, and are just um, they're just blown away by what they see you do on a bike. What do you think you have become better at? What did you improve at last year? Um, my biggest thing, I think, last year was my mental side of things. Uh, I, I learned off a previous championship was, uh, who's my teammate now, Colt Nichols. Uh, kind of like he says like a chess game and that stuff with like being smart with certain things and uh, one of the biggest things I kind of took away from it was just staying out of the drama with like any drama that was trying to stay away from as much as I possibly can 
and he did that perfectly in 2021 and I stayed in the drama being a teenager just being an idiot and ended up screwing me more <laughs> where he stayed away from it no one was really had was like enemies with him they were pretty good so that's like kind of I took that going into Supercross and outdoors and tried like making sure I keep it as like the drama away as much as I possibly can and some things just kind of happen but the best thing to try and do is like smooth it out a little bit in that stuff so it's not as bad as it could go into if I bear up and get mad about it. so it was uh that would probably be the biggest thing that I've proved on just my mature maturity on a bike I feel like the way I ride and the way I act off the bike is like completely opposite so <laughs> probably one of those two things you can flick, flick that switch pretty easily or you have to work at that um I can uh I can flick it on pretty like easily now uh, at first, it took obviously a bit of building to try and learn of what to think and that stuff, where my mindset's at. But now it's fair, it's I can flick it on. It's kind of like just as soon as I put a helmet or goggles on and go to ride, it kind of naturally just kind of switches on where now it's not even like I don't have to think of it. This kind of naturally happens. So the big news <laughs> this year and, and your front and center uh, of it is that it's the inaugural year of the Super Motocross World Championship. 17 rounds of Supercross, 11 rounds of Motocross, three playoff rounds to determine the inaugural Super Motocross World Champion. There's $500,000 on the line for the 250 winner overall. There's $1 million on the line for the 450 winner overall. You're equally as good in Supercross and Motocross. So this plays right into you, doesn't it? Are you excited about this? I'm excited to see how the tracks are. I hope it's still kind of technical a little bit. So it kind of still separates some people, but... um. I'm I, I'm excited to see how the track layouts are. I just kind of I could probably tell you more for once I see him and that stuff how it's built. But until then, I'm just mainly excited just to go and race again. To be honest, <laughs> there's a lot of talk about the fact that uh, we would see you on a 450 in the AMA Pro Outdoor Championship. We're going to see you on a 250 250 West Coast uh, on your factory HRC machine uh, in the 250 class starting this weekend at A1. So you might be expected, well, you would be expected to be in the top 20, the cutoff, get an automatic seed in the 250 class at the end of the year, but you may do enough in the 450 to be in the top 20 in both classes come those three playoff rounds. Have you allowed yourself to think about that? I kind of had a briefly like this kind of thought of it, but to be honest, uh, I'm more hoping this, I should, if I do my job right, I should get enough points with uh, 450 in outdoors and I'd most likely ride 450 just kind of again setting myself up for future with going 450 supercross get those first three races on and kind of get that feeling of being a little bit in a stadium and that stuff with uh with the 450 lads so i'm hoping more so 450 not much i think once i go 450 there's very rarely i'm actually going to go back down to 250 once i move up i'm kind of staying there hear you loud and clear we get the message looking forward to that we're also looking forward to a1 this Saturday night, kicking off both the Supercross and Super Motocross uh, World Championships. So last time we saw you at Anaheim, it seems forever ago. It was 2020 in your first year and you were at the front of the pack and you were involved in this thriller with the guy who would go on and win the championship, Dylan Ferrandez, and you almost saved this most incredible moment. No A1 in 2021. And then last year you got injured, so we didn't get to see you at, at, at A1 either. So does it feel like forever for you too? Are you excited about going back to A1? It's It's been a while and uh, there's definitely some unfinished business at Anaheim. So we're hoping to go back because obviously last year, like you said, I was going to go west, but then uh, we ended up getting injured with the rib and I uh, couldn't race it. So um, yeah, it's kind of like a, we got to sort some stuff out with Anaheim 1, make sure we're all good. So then once we go 450, we can go there with no problems. So uh Going back, I'm excited to be back under under the lights at Anaheim. It's uh going to be fun, and yeah, I just really can't wait wait to get going with the East West Coast tracks again. How uh how like hard and slippery they are. So it's going to be uh going to be exciting. Hopefully, it ends a lot better than last time. So uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, thanks for being with us on Chat with Champions. Um, before we let you go, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Are you that kind of a person who does that to yourself? No, I was talking the other night with my uh, with my parents, with Dazzy and, and Mumsy. We are kind of like the same, like, doesn't feel like a new year at all. This kind of feels like same day, different 
same thing, different day kind of thing. So I haven't, we didn't really do anything. We kind of had some friends over and got a barbecue and that stuff. But uh, besides that, it was just kind of mellow. Good. Well, happy new year, Jet. Make it a great year. And uh, we'll see you at Anaheim this Saturday night. Sweet. Thank you, guys. 